white airbrushing paint. So if you've been airbrushing for a while or you're new to airbrushing, then you've probably noticed that white is the color that gives you the most grief when creating your artwork. I've been getting lots of questions regarding white and wanting to know tips on how to minimize the issues that come along with using this color. Let's get into it right now. So as you know, I like using Trident water-based airbrush colors. They're automotive grade pigments. They can be thinned with their reducer that allows the paint to flow so much better than just adding water. The other brand that I do enjoy using is Createx Illustration Colors. I find that they flow really well for another water-based product. So one of the first factors when airbrushing white is to know what airbrush you're using and what needle size or nozzle size it has. The GSI Creos PS289 has a 0.3 mil needle nozzle setup. The GSI Creos PS770 has a 0.18 mil needle nozzle setup. So a lot finer than the 289 and the Awada Eclipse has a 0.35 mil needle nozzle setup. So this one is the biggest out of all of them than the 289 than the 770. So running the white through airbrushes that have a larger needle nozzle size will make it a bit easier for you to dispel the paint and have less issues of tip drying. However the problems really start to occur when you start using airbrushes like the Awada Micron which runs a 0.23 mil needle nozzle setup that's the CMC plus or something like this which has the 0.18 mil that is gonna be a lot harder to get a nice flow with your white so what can you do to eliminate that well there's a few little things you can look at doing I'm going to show you them now using this brush because it has the finest needle nozzle setup so once you've mastered your white with a finer setup then you'll have no issues putting that same white mix into the larger needle brushes now we're going to add some white in as is you don't need to fully fill the cup as always make sure that breather hole is clear otherwise that's going to obstruct the flow of your paint and I'm running at about 30 psi you can see it's spraying and this is why I love the trident paints because they do flow really well even out of the bottle through a finer brush like this So if you have a closer look, you can kind of see that the overspray is a little bit grainy in spots. So to avoid that grain, I'm going to thin out the white a little bit more. So now I've thinned out my paint more. I can turn down the air pressure coming out of the airbrush using the MAC valve on the front here. But if your airbrush doesn't have that, you can obviously turn it down on your regulator. But I'm just going to go ahead now. It's about a 70-30 ratio, meaning 70% reducer. 30% paint and you can see that that is just flowing really nicely you can even get nice dots go even finer Okay, and what I'm getting now, which is really common with the white, is tip drying. You can probably just see it on the end of the needle there. So you can carefully pick it off if you like with your fingernails, but just be very careful with it, especially with a fine needle like this. A safer way would be to use a cotton bud or Q-tip. You can see these ones have a pointy end and a round end, so you can use either or and spray a bit of reducer or airbrush cleaner on there and then you can clean that off nice and carefully to remove any of that tip drying. You can also use a bit of paper towel, soak that in there and then press the needle in there carefully and that's going to help as well. Once you've dislodged your tip drying, give it a blast out and you're good to go. If you want a more detailed video on that, I'll pop a link in the description below. But when you're running your paint this thin, there's a bit of a trade-off. So it, it flows really nice but if you go too heavy, you can see it's a lot wetter and could easily spider out on you. So to avoid this, you'd have to then obviously thicken your paint, but then you're gonna get more tip drying. So it's getting that balance and that mix right so that you've got the nice flow, but you can also paint confidently without it spidering out on you. 
So personally, what I like doing is I'll run my paint thinner. So that means, yeah, you're gonna have to coat over it more to get a really bright white highlight, but you're gonna get a lot less tip drying. So that is my preference. If you're wanting quick coverage, then you may have to run your paint thicker. And what I would do in that scenario is then turn your PSI up. So you could turn it up to say 30 to 40, and that's gonna help to push that paint out when you're running the thicker paint. When you're running thinner paint, then you can reduce your PSI. So you can drop it down to to say 18 to 20 PSI and then run at the 70% reduce a 30% paint mix ratio. And you can also use a Mac valve if you have access to that on your airbrush. And all these things are gonna help to allow you to paint with the white a lot more detailed and avoid the tip drying. Another thing that is super important to minimize your tip drying is to make sure that you always have the air pressed down and you just pull back for paint and then shut it back off. So make sure that you return the trigger back into the home position. So paint on, paint off, paint on, paint off. And even when you're coloring in, paint on, paint off, paint on, paint off, and build up your strokes. So you can see with white, I can go nice and bright, but using the air, you can dry it off, dust over it, and that's how you're gonna get that intense white. You can see I've got nice coverage there and I am starting to get tip drying again. That's pretty common and a lot more frequent when using white, so don't freak out about that. Also, it depends on what brands of paint you're using. Every brand of paint will be slightly different. So I can speak for the ones that I've mentioned in this video because they're the ones that I use. I cannot confirm how well other brands flow as I haven't had any experience with them. But I have to say, water-based paints have come a long way since I started using them. I remember they used to be extremely cloggy and you'd be forever cleaning off tip drying, whereas now they're just, the technology has improved so much. So I hardly ever use urethanes anymore. I just stick with the water base. It's a lot easier to use, easier to clean up and you don't have to deal with the potent smells. So keep all those things that I mentioned in mind and just persist with your white paint. It does take a little bit of practice to get the feel for it. If you need to, get your paint mixes right using all your other colors and then you might just have to fine tune your white. Another thing that I like doing is I also like to strain my paint, especially if I'm running the detail color, that final tone. I wanna to make sure it's flowing perfectly and there's no dried paint because all of that is gonna to contribute to the tip drying. So I like using these mini filters. They're just a disposable variety. They work really well. So you just sit them on top like so when you're pouring your paint in. Don't sit them flat because then the paint is gonna run over the sides. So I just have it sort of hovering above slightly. Pour your paint in and then you'll be certain that it's gonna run smoothly for you. I would recommend that you pour the pre-mixed paint in there. So always mix it up in a separate container and then pour it in from there. So keep all those tips in mind that I mentioned when working with your paint. Get that paint dialed in so that you can really use white confidently in your artwork. So just remember to look at your PSI, the paint mix and the airbrush that you're using. So those three things and that's going to help you better understand what mix is right for your particular brush and the application meaning the artwork that you are creating. So to learn more check out some of the other videos and playlists that I've got listed here and until next time go grab your airbrush do some amazing artwork yourself and I'll see you again very very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching bye for now.